everybody and welcome to the Vector Sector. In today's tutorial video we're going to be talking about applying 3D effects onto pixel art in Adobe Illustrator. Now if you don't know how to create pixel art in Adobe Illustrator please check out one of the videos that I have made previous uh, on that subject. Um, if you're on YouTube here's the link you could click on uh, to go straight to that video. Learn that technique first. Um, because we're not going to be actually creating pixel art in Illustrator today. We're going to be applying effects onto artwork that we've already created. Okay, so I have the character Bub here from the Bust and Move Puzzle Bubble franchise. I really like this character. And as you can see, I've applied effects to make it look like he's made up these 3D little cubes um, with dynamic lighting on it, and it looks really nice. Basically, what we're going to be doing is, this is our end product. I'll show you what I started with here. So I'm going to hide him and bring up Bub as he used to be. Okay, you can see him right here. I'm going to turn off that background so it's not distracting. This is the basic basic pixel art that I created earlier. Um, it's just a grid that I've converted to a live paint group and I colored in the individual pixels until he was finished. Okay, so go ahead and select your pixel art that you have. We're going to go up to Effect, 3D, Extrude, and Bevel. Once you select that, the 3D Extrude and Bevel options um, are going to pop up on the screen here. Now, really, this effect is as simple as pushing a button, and you already have some really neat artwork. Um, I never thought to do this, because I never thought that this 3D effect would work on pixel art, which is the technique I use is a little unconventional. Um, the grid system in Illustrator I don't think is meant to be used as live paint group to create pixel art. It just so happens that you can you can use that to create pixel art. So I never thought that by doing an unconventional thing in Illustrator that something like the 3D would, would even work on it. Um, but one day I was experimenting around and to my surprise I found that the 3D um, effect works really good on this live paint grid um, and turns each and every pixel into an, to its own little cube. It's a really neat effect. So I'm going to go over to preview here, click that. Okay, as you can see, um, it's already started to work here. It's taken our pixel art and extruded it in Z space. Now, if you're not familiar with 3D space, um, you know your X and Y. Um, think of Z space as the depth. Um, so we're sending this back into Z space. As you can see, the cubes are going back. If I go over to extrude depth right here and put it up to 100, I took a little while to render, you could see this got stretched out even more. Go ahead and put whatever you'd like in this um, category. I kind of like it to look like a single um, cube here. Um, I get that result by doing extrude depth of 25 points. Um, go ahead and experiment and see what you like. Um, now we can change this around in 3D space however you like. By um, using this diagram right here, we could grab the cube, we could rotate it all over the place, we could manually input um, our different dimensions, um, or you could also use these defaults up here which are kind of neat. So example, isometric left. We'll put him going this way. And there's many others. I think this is the default one. I'm just going to use the default one for this because it gives a nice look. Okay, now some of the things that I do differently, and like I said, you can mess around with these um, functions and create whatever you'd like, um, but these are some of the things I've used um, that I think give a really nice looking final product. Um, you'll see over right here, right under extrude depth, you'll see bevel. If you set this to tall round, I like this one here, and it's going to take a little while to render. You not, might not be used to this um, in Illustrator because it doesn't pop up very often. Um, if you do video, you'll be very used to re things rendering, but not so much in Illustrator. So we've got to be a little patient. Um, it's actually applying an effect to each and every little 3D cube in this illustration. So it's going to take a while, and depending on your computer's performance, it might go faster than others. Okay, there we go. Now you can see what it did here. It, it beveled in each and every one of these little cubes, which gives it a really nice effect because it gives a highlight on each and every little cube, I think adding to that 3D, um, 3D look. Um, there's a few things I would change here though. Right here in the height, 
this is beveling out a little bit too much for me. So I'm going to change that to 2. And like I said, we're going to be rendering a lot in this video, which is something you might not be used to in Illustrator. OK, and there it is. Now you'll see it doesn't bevel out as much. Um, I really like this highlight that's on each and every, every cube. I think that's a really nice look. And now it's a lot more subtle. Um, also, in our options over here, we have our light intensity. It's already blown up all the way. You can change where your light source is coming from in here. You're just placing uh, a light on the sphere. So kind of imagine you're in 3D space and you're placing uh, a virtual light into a room. Uh, I'm just going to leave it where it's at. That gives an OK look. Ambient light, um, it's going to create, it's going to make basically our darks darker. Um, I, I like this right here, so I'm going to stick with that. I may I'll put it up just a little bit. I'm going to go to 60 so you can see what it does. Watch the darks here. Okay, now you can see that this created a lighter um, shade here, and I think that looks about right for me. Um, highlight size, you could, you could change that as well. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with how this is looking, so I'm going to hit OK. All right. And I created a background for Bub here. So I'll turn that on. Make sure your 3D object is selected. Then go to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow. OK. I already put this in previously, so I know that's going to look good. So I'm going to hit OK. And once again, it's going to be applying that Drop Shadow on top of all the 3D effects that we've already done. So it's going to have to do that all over again in our rendering progress, so just wait for that. And there we go. Now it has a drop shadow and I think it gives it a little bit more depth. Okay, the possibilities are pretty endless uh, with this effect. It's really neat and I'm glad I stumbled across this so I could share it with you. Um, I'm interested in seeing what you came up with. So if you came up with something really cool, send me a message to a link to your artwork. I'd love to see what you made using uh, these effects. And uh, until next time, this is Dan Grady with the Vector Sector. If you want to, go ahead and click the link in the, my description here to become a fan of my Facebook page, The Vector Sector. There you can learn new tips and tricks um, in Adobe Illustrator. See you next time.